Ladies and gentlemen, it is here. Apex Legends Season 3 Meltdown Patch Notes Update Notes are live, and I am going to be the first to bring them to you, hopefully. Welcome to the channel, guys. If you do enjoy this type of content, if you're excited about Season 3 like me, if you can't wait to play or if you've watched any of my other videos, leave a like. Comment down below what you're most excited about. We've got a new legend. We've got new changes. We've got crazy additions to perks, a new map. Uh, honestly, some balance changes that people are going to be surprised about some misinformation from yesterday that actually is going to get corrected today in this video so stay tuned for the complete accurate fully official patch notes coming up right now thanks so much for watching guys and uh just thanks again for ea game changers for inviting me out into uh ea's beautiful la to get some of this footage underneath it's a great game with jack frags and rogue huskers uh you guys will see it watch it till the end it's honestly super super cool let's get started with apex legend season three if you haven't seen the videos they link a ton of those i'll link the patch notes down below and of course the new legend crypto now cool calm and collected crypto deploys a special surveillance drone to stay in the fight and out of the spotlight if you haven't seen crypto already where have you been but if you haven't he has uh, a little bit of an overview for his abilities that I'll go through now he is truly a surveillance legend and what does this mean it means he's kind of actually usurping bloodhound although bloodhound does get some buffs as well as Gibby and bang we'll talk about those in a few moments but his passive neural link allows crypto to see what his surveillance drone detects and also allows his teammates to do that as well so they're kind of neural linked to what he can see in his drone uh the surveillance drone is the big thing about crypto he has a drone that he could actually go into in the middle of a fight at any point in time by pressing q on your mouse um excuse me yeah on your keyboard i'm not sure what it is on your controller but you press that and uh you essentially fly up into the air and you get information you can track opponents uh and you can also use your drone to charge up an emp now this emp deals 50 shield damage slows players and destroys traps i'm sure you've seen tons of gameplay if not check out uh one of my crypto videos and guides or check out anything else there's a lot of people playing him and we'll be playing him today now one of the biggest things about him is that he's going to be a very strong champion and legend excuse me in this brand new map world's edge now most of you have seen this map if you haven't here's a beautiful graphic that they included with the patch notes today and uh here's what they have to say about the map because people are asking is king's canyon coming back will it be playable in a rotation here's the official word after multiple suspicious setbacks during the reconstruction of king's canyon the syndicate has decided to move the games to the cliffside mining city known as world's edge on nearby talos now what's interesting is that the multiple setbacks during reconstruction were a result of crypto as we've seen in this video so crypto has been planning this all along but we don't know exactly what for legends can explore towering skyscrapers frozen by a chemical explosion then catch a train to ice covered hills while avoiding deadly pits of multiple in lava if they want to be crowned champion in this new arena one the train is real and it's awesome two the lava is real it's not that awesome but it doesn't kill you you can actually walk in it it will do a little bit of damage but it's a very very cool area as well and of course the same rules of the br apply but where is king's canyon for the start of season three world's edge will only be playable will be the only playable map across both regular and ranked matches they say as the season progresses we'll be looking at data sentiment and feedback to help us determine the best way to bring bring king's canyon back into the mix sorry guys i'm amped up I'm, I'm rushing over my words i apologize i'm just super hyped anyways what this means is king's canyon is not going anywhere for good but it's gone now and they'll basically gauge our response so let me know what you guys think do you want it playable again do you want to come back in a few months let, let me know what you're thinking about that now let's get into the new weapon which if you haven't seen is amazing this is going to be one of the best weapons i believe in this season so once you see it pick it up and that's because it's a weapon that's in the normal loot table you can find it on the ground in apex legends you don't have to wait for a special care package it is the charge rifle the charge rifle is a brand new energy rifle sniper that takes time to warm up and will do minor damage to players if you keep a bead on them before delivering a mighty blow to whomever is on the receiving end of it the charge rifle is part of the standard loot pool and can be found all over the map so as i said it's part of the standard loot pool and it has two phases one when it's charging up his beam which will do damage actually up to a decent amount and then of course one huge blow that will be extremely deadly and i believe this is a hit scan weapon you guys check it out it is super super awesome now of course season three has a brand new battle pass and the rewards are something that i almost feel like should be kept up for a brand new event but the battle pass 
Pass is one of those beautiful things that just keeps getting better and better. Respawn EA had some difficult times bringing great cosmetic content to this season, but just looking at uh, Crypto's new outfits as well as some of the things we've seen previewed with the Pathfinder and Lifeline skins, this Battle Pass is going to be amazing and it's something you guys want to check out and will probably be very valuable, very worth the money that you spend on it if you do decide to support this game. Now, because we're going to cover that in maybe another video or some other people will focus on that, I'm going to move straight into the buffs of the legends and the weapons and also the big nerfs. So let's talk about it. The first huge buff is the Executioner perk. Now remember the gold armor had a perk called Executioner, which gave you a full shield recharge on successful completion of a finisher. Now in Season 3, all legends will have this perk. That, that's that's huge finishers will now recharge your shield regardless if you have gold armor equipped or not gold armor will now have a guardian angel perk that is detailed below in the loot meta changes and we already know what that is you, you guys will get the official uh terms of it in just a second but that's pretty awesome you finish somebody you style on them and you get your shield back that is actually giving uh, a worthwhile value to the risk it takes to do a finisher super great change now Gibby, the big boy, let's talk about him and his buffs. I did a video on him yesterday, check that out if you want to see some gameplay. Um, but man oh man, Gibby is getting some huge, huge buffs and a couple of adjustments that are actually a little bit, you know, nerfed. Not really overall a nerf, but they are nerfed in terms of what they're doing to his shield. Players in the dome shield are going to now have the ability to use healing items that shield, syringes, medkits, everything you can use to heal. 25% faster. This is essentially being able to heal as fast as Lifeline um, right under his shield and that's for all teammates. That's pretty amazing. Now it does use the word players which makes me think that enemies can use it too very much like enemies can use Lifeline's drone but I don't have confirmation on that you'll just have to see in game. However I think your plan has gone wrong if there are enemies healing inside your own dome shield anyway so it, it just might not matter. The other big change that I didn't know is the increased throw distance by 60% so uh, you can actually throw that shield by a lot longer um, not quite two times a little bit less than that but that's a pretty good change allowing you to heal up or at least safeguard your teammates or somebody who's gotten down uh, from a lot farther away the, also there's an increased cooldown meaning that all these good perks come with the fact that you now have 10 extra seconds on the cooldown going from 20 to 30 seconds so it's not just give 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 they have made some adjustments to include uh, a little bit of balance in these very positive changes He's also seen some changes to his ult, which no one has talked about. The defensive bombardment has seen a huge increase from four and a half minutes to three minutes. So you're gonna get it much more often. And it is already one of the stronger ults in the game. And I think this is a great change. They've also just decreased the duration by eight seconds to six seconds, and they've increased the throw distance by 36%. Now, what does this mean? It means that the damage is probably a little bit less in, as far as total output, because you have two less seconds of that bombardment hitting but it's going to be more flexible and more valuable because you can throw it farther and it's going to be up more often because the cooldown has been decreased quite significantly about 33 percent so big big changes there for Gibraltar he's going to be a good one in season three now let's talk about Bloodhound Bloodhound has a few adjustments too Eye of the Allfather has a reduced animation time to activate by 33 percent meaning you'll get into your ultimate 33 percent faster it now immediately tells you how many targets have been pinged as well so you get some more visual visual information to help keep tracking down those opponents you're chasing. Beast of the Hunt also has, um, excuse me, this is, that was his, I'm sorry about that, that was his actual, uh, Act, uh, tactical beast of the hunt which is his actual um, ultimate is getting essentially a similar thing so it's getting a reduced animation time to activate by 30 percent not the 33 percent but also it's getting an increased movement speed bonus from 25 to 30 percent the numbers were like 30 to 35 or 35 to 40 in other videos it's 25 to 30 percent officially there and it also fixed an issue with fov scaling messing up ads aim sensitivity which i know was a big one so the tactical allows you to get the immediate ping of how many targets uh, faster animation time and also faster animation time for the ultimate and better movement speed and a little fix 
to the FOV scaling. That's pretty nice. Rolling Thunder for Bangalore, though, got an increase in damage. It's not going to be the same as Gibraltar's damage, 40 damage per hit. And I heard some numbers like 80 or something. That was wrong as well. So a lot of misinformation. Hopefully you guys are watching this video, sharing it, spreading it to people who might have thought it was something else, who didn't wait for the official patch notes. At the EA event, we didn't get full numbers like this. So this is really, really helpful to everyone involved. So this means it's going to be, you know, deadlier. I'm not sure how deadly it will be i'm gonna check it out as soon as i can everyone's gonna be playing crypto i'm gonna be trying a little bangalore maybe a little bloodhound to give you guys some updated info on how they actually feel to play make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for all that octane also had an issue with his fov scaling messing up during his ads messing up his ads aim sensitivity while using adrenaline junkie and so that is actually going to be changed as well so they're going to fix that now wraith interestingly enough has been pulled back additional nerfs uh, have been i think added but they've pulled it back for further testing um and i think wraith is just somebody that they're keeping on the radar that's what they say in the designer notes um basically the dimensional rift uh no longer deploys if you are downed before placing it that's the only change they've made to wraith so keeping an eye on one of the most popular legends and how successful they've been already in apex season three um, but also not making any big nerfs yet and might have actually pulled back any nerfs that they had been planning so let me know what you guys think about that wraith sweaty ttvs not that i don't like them but i'm just saying they're still going to be very very relevant in this meta and it'll be cool if, especially if you put time into wraith pathfinder the grapple this is a big one pathfinder one of the top three legends in the game right now has had a reduced grapple projectile velocity by 33 percent meaning it takes a fraction of a second longer to connect the grapple to the wall the behavior once you are connected remains exactly the same he's also seen a zip line increased cooldown from 90 seconds to 120 seconds that's his ultimate now, let's talk a little bit about this. Not only is he getting a 30% um, or uh, essentially nerf additional additional you know uh, amount of cooldown to his zip line which is i think a pretty good behavior um when you consider the fact that it was only a minute and a half and gibraltar's was four and a half minutes the fact that this is now uh you know uh two minutes and gibraltar's is three and a half i think gives a lot more parity to some of these legends also the grapple velocity feels odd but it doesn't feel like he's not useful anymore the 33 percent is noticeable though i have played it and i will say that i'm curious to hear your thoughts as to whether you think it's going to impact him heavily i still feel like his ability to get high ground is there and thus the most important part of his kit the relative speed that he does it is just something that's being balanced and i think it was a good change now let's get into the big changes guys the weapons and the gold weapons are new in season three as well as some of the passives for the gold armor let's talk about that the weapon and loot meta hop-ups, let's hit the designer notes here. They say, we think the number of hop-up types in the game is about as high as we want to go right now when we consider loot dilution and the likelihood of finding a desired hop-up. Going forward, we intend to rotate hop-ups each season. Very interesting. Some may be removed from the loot pool to make room for new or returning ones. Below our changes, we'll be making the hop-ups for season three. The two big ones everyone's excited about. Disruptor rounds, gone. Skull piercer rifling, gone. The base headshot damage multipliers of the DMR and wingman have been increased to compensate this, though, uh, off of that huge news that the two, I think, most uh, infamous hop-ups that were the most successful for the most successful weapons have now been removed. That means the whole meta should shift, so if you haven't played since Season 2, uh, be excited to have almost a new game experience. The wingman, though, really gets the better end of this because the base multiplier multiplier was 2.0. With the Skull Piercer, it was 2.25, and now it's 2.15, which is kind of like, I mean, listen, you don't have to find the Skull Piercer anymore, and you kind of get halfway to where you would have been with the Skull Piercer anyway. I'm saying that's a pretty decent trade. You still come out on top. It's hitting for about 102 or so with the wingman. Uh, the DMR gets a little bit less of that because it scaled higher. It went from 2.0 to 2.5 with the skull piercer, and now it's at the 2.15 base standard with the wingman. So let me know about those weapons. I still think they'll both be very relevant, um, and it will just save you the hassle of trying to find that skull piercer as well. The new hop up, Anvil Receiver. Let's talk about that, as well as the double tap trigger, the Anvil Receiver 
receiver essentially attaches to only the flatline and the R301. It is rated at a level 4 gold rarity, and this gives your semi-auto modes to your assault rifles. It offers highly increased damage, but at the cost of reduced rate of fire and double ammo per shot. Now, I'm sure most of you guys have seen this as well. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this, but it essentially turns that assault rifle that you're going to be using to laser somebody down into more of a, you know, semi-auto sniper type thing. And with a bigger map in Season 3, this is going to be very uh, effective and really flexible for your choices in how to take fights uh, and also punishing opponents who might be needing to get downed quickly or you might want to uh, have some more value for your shots if you're in a peak poke battle and you know you're not going to be able to laser them for a long time. Really cool stuff. Make sure to check it out. The, also, the new hop-up double tap trigger attaches to a G7 Scout and an EVA 8 Auto. A lot of people are considering this to be the strongest hop-up that they're adding, especially considering the EVA 8. The rarity level is level 3, purple, and this hop-up makes each trigger pull fire a quick two-round burst. So a really good way to understand these hop-ups is Every time you're using them, you're using two bursts, you're using two bullets essentially, two pieces of ammo for every one trigger, so to speak. Whether two are coming out at the same time though is the difference between those. And the double tra tap trigger, from what I've seen on the EVA 8, probably makes it potentially even more of a burst option or priority than the Peacekeeper. It looks like it's going to be extremely strong, one of the, uh, the weapons that you should keep your eyes out for in this meta. Now, one of the big changes as well, moving on to consumables, then we're getting into some of the nerfs and the original weapons. The ultimate accelerants. Ultimate accelerants have actually had an ultimate charge increase from 20% to 35%. I noticed this playing as crypto and said, dang, I got a lot of ultimate charge from this. And that's true. They have increased it, but they've also reduced the amount in the world by 40%. So they'll be better, but less easy to find. Also a slight nerf to Watson because she already gets 100%. So now that just means they're less common, meaning she won't be able to have them as often if her looting rotations aren't as strong. Now let's talk about the gold gear changes. The gold backpack has a new perk, Guardian Angel. With Guardian Angel, you will revive down to teammates with bonus, bonus health and shields if they have armor. So if they have no armor, that won't apply. But if they do, they'll come back with bonus health and shields. This means that for a lifeline, this is going to be even better because she'll get the safe heal. She'll have the ability to heal them, uh, revive them a little faster with uh, just so much more uh, value added to that. So it's going to be a really nice thing uh, for those support characters that like to get the the quick res off for their teammates and the gold armor be careful of who you make fun of in high school i saw this meme on reddit earlier today and i love it shout out to whoever made that one the gold armor used to be the joke you used to have to use the executioner to get your shields back which was super risky and never valuable now it has fast use consumable items take half as long to use which is previously on the gold backpack the big point about this is though you'll now be able to tell when an opponent has it because you'll be able to see the gold damage numbers on their armor unlike the backpack which made it like kind of a secret whether you would know if they had that gear now let's talk about the weapon changes to finish off this video we've got a couple of bug fixes and ranked series two things as well but this is definitely the highlight for those who are really interested on what's going on weapon wise um the weapons for season three their goals were to encourage and improve longer range gunfights and reduce power on some of the weapons that have been dominating lately. We will of course be closely watching data and player feedback on these during the season. So the R99 seeing a bit of a nerf. What is the nerf? It's a base mag reduction size. So going from 18, 22, 26, and 30, the magazine size for the R301 scaling off of extended mags will now go 18, 20, 23 and 27 meaning that the base mag of 18 will stay the same but it will not scale as much as it gets to higher levels and your high end of the amount of bullets in your magazine will be lower from 30 to 27 they also added some recoil randomness to pattern so it won't be as easy to spray you'll have to pray a little bit on that one still going to be a very good weapon but not as good as it was before the p d dub Prowler. They added some slight recoil randomness while maintaining the same pattern when fired in full auto mode, meaning that if you found the select fire, turn it to full auto, you're going to see a little bit more recoil randomness. 
not really a huge change, but something that I'm glad they mentioned. The longbow gets the nerf most people were hoping for, but I think this is a, I take this with a grain of salt, because for me, I liked the way the longbow played and felt as a weapon. I was watching Doc the other day, and he was saying some good points that the weapons are supposed to feel good, and I think the longbow did feel good, but the problem was, in pro play, the way people camp, the slow rate of play, which hopefully is changing here a little bit, um, the longbow is just too strong. So they've reduced its rate of fire. They've uh, reduced the leg damage multiplier as well. The rate of fire going from 1.6 to 1.3, and the leg damage multiplier to 0.9, all the way down to 0.8. Not a huge change, 0.9 to 0.8, no big deal. Rate of fire is really the big one, um, but I think it's still going to be a very valuable weapon and a lot of damage per bullet hit, which is always a valuable thing in long range sniper fights. The G7 Scout and the Hemlock though, these are my two big shout outs for the season. You're gonna see a lot of use of these new weapons, especially considering the double tap uh, for the hop up for the G7. The increased base damage of G7 has been bumped up from 30 to 34, that's huge. And also a slight decrease, excuse me, and uh, the Hemlock has seen an increase in base damage from 18 to 22. And I saw some really weird uh, information yesterday in the comments saying the Hemlock didn't get a damage buff, it got a decrease. No, these are increased by four damage each, 18 to 22, 30 to 34 for the Scout and Hemlock, respectively. Uh, there is a slight decreased rate of fire to both fire modes, however, for the Hemlock. So it gets a little more damage, gets a little slower, and that's uh, an important balancing point for the weapon. Still feels amazing, going to be a really good pickup. The Mozambique also gets a little buff, and it gets a decreased pattern spread. The Mozambique will now reset from recoil faster, which should make it easier to track targets and see where shots land. So the Mozambique getting a little quality of life things, a little decrease in the pattern spread to make it more reliable as a weapon when you do use it. And again, with the hammer point rounds, which are still in the game, going to be very, very valuable. The L star, however, gets a interesting change. Now, a lot of people said it got buffed. A lot of people said it got nerfed. It got a little bit of both. I'd say it's a little bit of a change. The L star sees a substantial reduction to horizontal recoil, meaning recoil got better, so it did get buffed there. However, it now comes equipped with a one times digital threat, which is very valuable, uh, but the damage is reduced from 21 to 19. So it gets a damage nerf, but a recoil and a sight buff, depending on if you do like the digital threat, some people don't, but I think that at the end of the day, this is a good change, hopefully for the quality of life of the weapon. The problem is most people were expecting a significant buff in all areas because it just wasn't utilized and picked up at higher levels of play, but what this tells me is they've tried it with the horizontal recoil, they see it's a very good weapon right now, and they're trying to compensate early enough to make sure that it doesn't become crazy in Season 3. Let me know what you guys think about the new L-Star. Also, in Season 3, one of the things you may not notice is that they've swapped out the previous set of gold weapons with a fresh set of new ones for Season 3. They go on to say, keep an eye out for these fully kitted beasts that include Tier 3 versions of all compatible attachments, hop-ups, and the following optics. The Flatline makes the gold weapon list, I feel like I'm announcing the Oscars, right? Uh, includes 1x to 2x optics. Also, the EVA 8 makes the list as well, congratulations EVA 8, includes a 1x threat scope. Uh, the Triple Take makes the list also and gets a 4 to 10 times threat scope. The G7 Scout gets a 2 to 4 times optics and makes the list and charge rifle the brand new weapon gets a four to ten times threat scope that is going to be insane i cannot wait to play with that legendary weapon it's probably going to be the best legendary weapon um, and most fun that i think you can have in this game so make sure to check that out guys those are the list flatline eva a triple take g7 scout charge rifle those are your season three gold weapons now they have some quality of life things that i am going to rush through read them for you guys so if they relate to you listen to them check them out maybe just listen to hear for something that you might have experienced so that you know that they've been changed or at least looked at and let me know if there's anything that's been missed that you've been hoping they would have looked at yourself they added a random option for customizing your unlocked load screens. They expanded the ping wheels that you can now equip your unlocked intro and kill quips. They actually allow you, this is a pretty cool quality of life change, to equip up to eight intro or kill quips in the lobby. So you can choose a bunch of them instead of just having one. Nearby enemies can also hear quips when activated, which is pretty insane, meaning that you can now kind of taunt effectively in the game. You can press Y while your ping wheel is up to access your controller or F1 if you're on your default keyboard binding. Um, 
uh, in order to do this and you can celebrate quick chat excuse me the celebrate quick chat is now the first option in the quip wheel it was previously down on the d-pad there's also a thing called the new legend battle chatter legends now have voice lines that will call out when your squad is being third partied this is triggered if you take damage when recently damaged by another living squad i noticed this and thought it was amazing but didn't realize that this was a new feature I was fighting a squad and Gibraltar said, another squad coming, brother. And I was like, wait, what? He's, and then I was like, he's actually right. This is really, really informative and really good stuff. And it makes your legend feel like he's working or she's working or they're working with you in the game, which is really, really cool. Make sure to listen for that. They'll give you a heads up on bad guys coming. Uh, you can also now equip multiple skydive emotes. If you have multiple on a character, hold A while sky skydiving to open the menu to select the skydive emote you want to use that's obviously for controller uh, daily challenges should only give you at most one challenge for a legend you don't own uh, there will be no dupe character daily challenges you should never get two Gibraltar dailies in the same day as an example uh, fixes for slowdown performance drops at the start of the match Mirage decoys will now go where directed when deploying them during the drop if Mirage isn't the jump master the lifeline drone of compassion healing drone will no longer float away after being deployed on supply ships they fix an issue where legends could show up as locked instead of selected when joining a match later uh, small improvements across UI to make fonts and other elements more readable. Uh, when swapping weapons with one on the ground, attachments will now attempt to transfer to your stowed weapon in addition to the weapon you are about to pick up. They also fix some huge bugs, which I am not going to read. I am just going to throw on the screen for you guys to look at so you all know. Take a second, read through them. There's some stuff about lifeline care packages. There's some stuff about map fog, visual VFX, and death boxes. There's some stuff about footsteps and zip lines and jump jets and audio rebalancing which could be interesting uh, for some people who feel like they just been caught up so make sure to check that out or read the notes they'll be linked below most of you guys already know about the ranked season two series coming out essentially let me just give you a quick overview because if you're into high level play this is going to be exciting after ranked one series one you guys are going to get your new skydive trails you're going to get your new obviously if you ranked high enough you'll get your new weapon charms uh you'll also be able to get some really cool i think like uh i think there's like a badge or something that you're going to be able to get for ranked all of the things are in the ranked blog this has already been covered i'm not trying to do that in this this one uh, because you guys probably have already seen it but ranked gets a basically brand new set and it also gets a new scoring system which means that you'll be able to have more marked improvements that aren't as huge as some of the other ones so it, even if you get a couple of kills and you do decently in a game but you don't make top seven you make top eight you should still see a little bit more improvement um, in terms of you gaining more RP uh, so that you can have more minor improvements but still keep improving versus like this huge amazing improvement if you get first place and then you know get 11th place you get nothing right so that's the idea. They also count assists to your overall score, which means, you know, you don't actually have to get the kill. A lot of times you get all the damage, not the kill. You feel like you're robbed. This helps you to add that to your score and really give a better example of how you're contributing to the game. All of that and so much more in your own experience is season three. So let me know what you think about it so far. Have you dropped yet? It is out right now. So go play it. And of course, if you like this video, please leave a like, comment down below, share it to your friends so they get the actual accurate information because there's been a lot of it going on and again just subscribe if you guys want to stay tuned for more season three content that's it for me guys long video but a good one as always never give up never stop gaming and i'll see you all at the world's edge